are their financial requirements to be successful. Collaboration with other franchise companies with competition and utilizing uh, franchisee feedback is crucial. Technology and, and AI. The idea of efficiency was big. Utilizing AI. AI also is being kind of right into the CRM system. So a lot of great tech out there. I think that with a great team in place that offers phenomenal customer service, I think is, is a win-win in the way to truly grow your business. Welcome to the Franchise Freedom Podcast, where you can escape the corporate trap through franchise ownership. Here's your host, Giuseppe Gramatico, The Franchise Guide. Welcome to the Franchise Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Giuseppe Gramatico, your franchise guide. Very exciting episode today. I uh, just got back from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we just had our national conference, which we have twice a year, and uh, got to sit down and, and talk with 125 plus of the top franchise companies out there, funding companies, fellow franchise coaches and, and consultants. It was a blast. I uh, learned a lot and uh, wanted to talk to you about our three or my top three takeaways from the conference. Recording this for the second time, we, we lost audio, so... I'm um, hoping to, to get everything here in, in, into the show. So diving right in, responsible franchising. So this has been a, a buzzword lately, been hearing a lot more of it. We recorded a few episodes with Lisa McGill. I'm going to put those in the, in the show notes here. And, you know, what is responsible franchising? And the way I define it is essentially, you know, giving the, the, the potential franchisee all the information they, they need via phone calls, covering everything in the franchise disclosure document speaking with you know existing franchisees so that that uh, potential franchisee can make the best informed decision franchisor not only do they provide feedback and the information needed but they also each franchisor will have this what would i call a franchisee avatar what is their ideal franchisee look like when it comes to transferable skill set you know do they need industry experience or not what are their financial requirements to be successful you know, taking into consideration marketing costs or build that cost for brick and mortar location. So uh, responsible franchising really isn't something new. It, it, it's been talked about a, a lot more. And as I mentioned, uh, that's something I also help with. And you know, I tell everyone that I work with uh, franchise is, is a business. There's always going to be risk, risk reward, right? We, we, we talk about that, but you need to, you know, do due diligence with the franchise or speak with the franchisees, which we call validation. And then actually go and for the most part, visit, whether virtually in person with some of the, uh, the founders, C-suite with, with the brand to really understand where that franchise is going. Kind of, I always say, meet the captain of the ship, uh, figure out where that brand is going. Are they bringing on income streams? Are they, you know, any, any other exciting you know, revenue streams, announcements and things like that. So that's what I define as, as responsible franchising, which, which leads us into, and you're going to notice, you know, these kind of all kind of relate with each other is the idea of competition and collaboration. So we had a lot of brands that were direct competitors of one another, just say in the painting space, the mosquito spraying space, the restoration space, just to name a few. And that's okay. You know, franchise companies realize that there's plenty of business to go around. Each franchise is, is based off of either a location or defined territory if it works in that market. So there is a capacity with every franchise as to the number of franchisees that franchise or uh, can take on an award. So, you know, sh the, the idea of, of competitors coming together to share ideas as to best practices, you know, what makes a successful franchisee, you know, ways to communicate that onboarding training and things like that, that was huge. So, the, you know, and, and just a general idea of all the franchise companies kind of getting together to collaborate on ideas of what's working best. And a, and a theme that kept coming up was the idea of franchisee feedback, because sometimes the franchisor is putting all this great content and training, marketing and things like that. But the franchisee is struggling in a different area. And without that crucial feedback as to, you know, these are areas we need assistance with. We're getting lots of leads, but the quality of leads, maybe the deals aren't closing. So is it a, is it a quality control issue where we need to tweak the, the marketing message or the platforms that we're marketing on is huge. So, you know, collaboration, you know, with franchise, with other franchise companies, with competition and utilizing uh, franchisee feedback is crucial. I talk about that all the time. 
you know, you need to let the franchise or know what's up if, if you're struggling in a key area because they may not know you're struggling in that area. They may think you need more marketing when it's more onboarding because you are, you know, having a lot of turnover with your staff and things like that. So is it, you know, who, who is the ideal candidate for that one position? Is it the onboarding and training? Maybe a comp you know, combination of, of, of everything. So that was that was really big. I mean, that flows into responsible franchising because responsible franchising, if you go to the, the, the first takeaway, you're taking into consideration feedback from people that bought the franchise, people that, in, that did not invest in the, in the franchise as well. But that feedback is, is key. Listening to your, to your customer, I, I always say, with any, with any business, and, and constantly improving. So, so that was the second takeaway. The third was around technology and, and AI. And this was, this was big because franchisors at the end of the day want to make their franchisees more efficient. So the idea of, for example, using drones to go up on a roof and take pictures, you know, looking for storm damage and maybe hitting up an entire street in an hour or less, as opposed to having someone take out a ladder you know, the time commitment of getting on a roof and then the risk, obviously, of getting up and down, you know, each roof and, you know, taking out that ladder. So the idea of, of efficiency was big. Utilizing AI, there are brands that we were talking to that have AI where you type in an issue. Maybe it's a technician that's offering a restoration or a, a cleaning or painting service, and they're able to put into the, into the chat, this is the issue I'm having and then get immediate, not just a response, but maybe some videos on how to troubleshoot an issue. And uh, you know, this comes in handy. So number one, the franchisee isn't getting pulled in or, or maybe that, that manager isn't getting pulled in for every issue or, or question, but maybe that job is, is being done on the weekend, on a holiday or, or kind of last minute. So that technician needs a response ASAP and that just helps with the overall productivity and efficiency. The AI also is being you know kind of right into the CRM system. So the AI really can factor in and predict how many leads are coming in for the day, the, the, you know, for the, the quality, and not just for the day, the week, the month, and, and, and the quarter and the year. So the AI is really kind of learning based off your inputs, what you need. Sometimes we don't need more leads. We have plenty of leads, but we need to increase the quality. Or with the leads we have, we need to really nurture those leads and help them, right? And guide them through that buyer's journey and so the AI is able to assist there, track everything, look at the number of opens, the interactions with the email, how long people are watching the video and give you reports as, as to kind of where we're, where, where you're losing people, or if you're not losing people, who are the people we should be contacting on a daily basis? That, 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 you know, the technology really is just getting better and better. You know, you, you, utilizing Bluetooth to, to measure a room, measuring someone's backyard for a, just say a mosquito spraying service, never having to go to the customer's location and doing it via technology, just putting their information and u utilizing satellite uh, imagery to calculate the size of someone's backyard. So you can quote them on the mosquito spraying for the season or whatever lawn treatments and fertilization and things like that. So tech has been big. It does not place uh, and get rid of face to face and, and having relationships, but uh, it's really being utilized for efficiencies, you know, marketing, reporting, getting in front of the, the ideal customer and just really trying to leverage because at the end of the day, we only have so much time in the day. We want to keep expenses as low as possible. We want to be efficient, being able to use the data. Sometimes we have all this great data. We don't know what to do with it. And the AI is always looking for trends, ways of improvement you know, taking a look at where the, for example, the, the lead flow is coming, you're doing all this, you know, marketing and, and things like that to find out that all your leads are really coming through YouTube. And maybe you want to double down efforts via YouTube, maybe place some ads on, on YouTube, but that is, is crucial information. So that, that was something. So to, so kind of to summarize responsible franchising, which we talk about, I'm going to link the show with Lisa McGill, the, the two part series. The idea of, of collaboration, both with and without competition, utilizing franchisee feedback, and then technology, AI, ways to make the franchisees more efficient, getting them, you know, you know maybe, you know, narrowing, you know, the, the close time, you know, for a customer signing up instead of b being a month, not even having to go out there and being able to do everything virtually, having a customer sign up via the, the CRM, in, input their information and uh, given a quote uh, all without having to speak with someone. So a lot of great tech out there. I think that 
with you know great team in place that offers phenomenal customer customer service. I think is is a win win in the way to truly grow your business. I know that's how I grow my business. It's it's a lot of face to face, maybe not in person, but via Zoom or StreamYard, which we're using for the podcast and utilizing AI and technology the best we can to be in front of our you know for people, educating as much as we can and responding and interacting as much as possible. So thanks again. It was an awesome conference. There were a lot of other takeaways. So if you'd like to jump on a call, ggthefranchiseguy.com, book a call top right corner of the website. We go to these conferences every six months. We'll be in, in I believe in Texas in, in January. So looking forward, if you have any questions or just want to just, just general questions on franchising, let me know, book that call. There's no cost for the call or for our services and glad to help in any way possible. Thanks again for joining everyone. Talk to you guys soon. See ya. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to learn how to make the transition from corporate to owning your franchise, join Giuseppe on the next episode. You can also follow on all social media platforms and achieve financial and time freedom today.